Welcome back to the course Learn Blockchain. Today we will be talking about smart contracts. What is smart contract, what it is used for and how it is related to blockchain. Despite the name, smart contracts are actually programs that runs on the blockchain. What comes on your mind when you hear a contract? Contract is a set of rules or clauses that parties agree on and it governs the relations between them. It basically says if this happen then this should happen after then this should happen. So essentially if you see programs they're actually the same. In programming you define rules, how program operates, if this then that, if that then this like that. So smart contracts are actually codes that can go on the blockchain. We haven't talked about code in the blockchain before. We have talked about many things. We have talked about data in the blockchain, transactions in the blockchain, but code in the blockchain it sounds very interesting. How can you run code on the blockchain? Let's talk about this little more. Let's start with Bitcoin. In Bitcoin there is a programming language called Bitcoin script. It actually allows you to code things on the blockchain. At the same time in Ethereum there is a programming language called Solidity and it allows you to code for Ethereum. For this tutorial the difference between these two programming languages will be an important component of our discussion. We'll be talking more about Solidity and Ethereum. The reason for that is Turing completeness of the language. The Bitcoin script is not Turing complete whereas Solidity is Turing complete. Now you might be wondering what is Turing completeness? So if a programming language is Turing complete then it means you can code absolutely any logic into that language. Anything you can think of, any logic you can write on a paper or have in your mind, you can code it in that language. How long it will take that code to run is a different question. It may take minutes, days, weeks or even years, but that does not matter. It's about this conceptual notion that you can actually code in it. It has all the required elements to facilitate that logic. Well, why Bitcoin script is not Turing complete and Solidity is Turing complete? Because in Bitcoin script, there is one component that is missing and very important component called loops. If you are familiar with programming, you know what loops are, for loop, while loops, do while loops, etc. Basically, loop is a way to tell the program to do a certain piece of code many times or iterations like 100 times, 1000 times or keep doing this until certain condition has been met, then stop the iteration. The reason for loop not being in Bitcoin script is not by accident. It is intentional. They didn't include loop in Bitcoin script because as we see further down, smart contracts or programs actually run on each node in the blockchain and they can really slow down the network. If somebody intentionally or non-intentionally create a program that has for instance infinite loop, the loop that does not have an end, it can destroy the whole blockchain or it can hang the whole blockchain and slow down. I bet you have run into an infinite loop once in your programming life, then you have no other option to shut down that compiler or software. So loops in general in programming is a dangerous tool if they are used incorrectly or in wrong hand. So in order to avoid any of these potential problems like running forever or infinite loops, Bitcoin script decided not to include loops. Solidity on the other hand found a way to include the loops, we will see how in the later course. Now let's have a look on a blockchain. So this is our blockchain, when a new block is added, instead of adding transactional data in the block, we can include smart contracts. So what does that mean? It means everybody in our network will actually have copy of this smart contract. So it's crazy right? One thing to have data copied into your machine, another thing is smart contracts computer program to have copied into your machine which will run there actually and everybody has a copy of it. So each node will have history of all the smart contracts, so if there are any previous smart contract that will be present on all the nodes. It's just the nature of blockchain. Then of course each node will have history of all the transactions and also every node must have the current states of all the smart contracts. What it means is smart contracts are programmed, they get educated, so they change their states and so this should be maintained by all the nodes. So here we go, this is a smart contract in a nutshell. I hope you have some basic understanding about smart contract. We will follow this in the upcoming tutorials and before ending this video, I would like to suggest you to read this article, Smart Contracts for Dummies. Interesting article, I will provide the link in the description and on this note, I will see you in the next video.